Hi, this is Ali and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will talk about the HTTP protocol. It is responsible for a big chunk of the communications online. Computers and browsers alike talk its language. It is the basic protocol behind all web pages you visit and it still holds up since the 90s. But do you know how it really works? Let's dive in. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. You request an online resource and you get the document back in hypertext. So what is hypertext, you may ask? It's a form of text document which can cross-reference other documents. It is generally in the form of hypertext markup language or HTML for short. Browsers then interpret the contents of this HTML document and display it in a human readable form. To be able to request and receive these documents though, we need some form of a connection between multiple computers, which is called a network. Unfortunately, network communication is not exactly reliable because information has to go over a physically limited set of infrastructure. When you have two different pieces of information that you want transmitted, this can only be done sequentially if you have a single physical channel between the two ends. But that would mean you couldn't load a web page while streaming a piece of audio, right? To overcome this, at a lower level, all communication is in the form of packets. These are small chunks of data that is put on the physical connection, one at a time, so that different things can be interleaved. For a larger network, this is even more important. When a network device receives information from multiple sources, it could only forward one of them at a time if it wasn't possible to interrupt a stream. When they are split into multiple packets, on the other hand, it can relay one of the packets while keeping the other one briefly in its memory, going back and forth between two inputs, reducing the latency and memory requirements. Even with this setup, it is still not possible to know when and how many packets will arrive. At some point, the device can get overwhelmed by these packets and there will be no memory left to keep them and it may start dropping them. Similarly, the physical connection is not perfect and sometimes the data will be corrupt. Another problem is, depending on the path the packet takes, the order of the packets is not guaranteed to match the transmission order. Because of all these limitations, today's internet is designed to be unreliable by default. So you would say, how does my music plays uninterrupted and I don't hear the song or web page out of order? To be able to reliably communicate with another computer on the internet, we need two fundamental things, locating the target and a reliable communication channel. There are two widely used protocols, the internet protocol and transmission control protocol. Together, they are generally referred to as TCP slash IP. Internet protocol is for locating network devices using addresses called IPs and thus the name and TCP enables in order and reliable transmission of data between them. Actually, you can try these mechanisms right now on your computer. There is a command line tool called NC, which is short for Netcat, and it can create such a reliable connection between computers. Let me show you. First, I fire up a terminal and then I create the listener by providing the L flag and a port to listen on. For now, you can think of the port as a channel that we will be using. In another terminal, I will create a connection by providing a target IP address. Again, NC followed by the IP of the target and the port. Running this, we initiate the connection. From this moment on, whatever I put in will be transmitted when I hit enter. Let's write, hello internet and send. It magically appears on the listener. The reverse is also true. I will respond back with hello stranger. Yes, we have made our own chat application. The transmitted data can be split up into multiple packets or get retransmitted if needed. TCP ensures they are all transmitted and received in the correct order and without any loss. Back to HTTP. It is also based on a reliable connection to the target computer. Once a connection is established, you send a request to ask for a piece of information. Let's now ask for Google's main page. First, I connect to the server using Netcat. 
This time, I don't know the IP, but I can cheat and use the domain name google.com and the default HTTP port of 80. We are now connected. To send my first request, I type the only method available in version 0.9 of HTTP, which is get. Then, a single space and the resource to be loaded. In this case, the root path. Upon sending a new line by pressing enter, we receive our first response from Google. Note that it says this is an HTTP 1.0 response, even though we requested this by providing no version at all. This is not a valid response because it should only include hypertext in that case. To be technically correct, let's now repeat the same request using HTTP 1.0. The older protocol is not supported by this server anyways. Again, after connecting to the target and typing the method and path, I append the version information to indicate I request an HTTP 1.0 response this time. With this improved protocol, I can now also include some request headers. Let's indicate we are interacting with the server as a human via the standard user agent header. First, I enter the header key and I enter its value after a colon and space. There are many such standard headers that we can use to instruct the target computer. This time, I send two new lines to notify the end of the headers and we receive the exact same reply as before. It starts with the protocol version and the status, which is 200 OK for this case. This indicates success. There are also other potential status codes like 404 not found, etc. With version 1.0, the response does not have to be pure hypertext and it can also contain its own set of headers following the status line. Here, the content type header indicates that the actual body is HTML, but it could have been any form of data. Body of the response starts after an empty line following the headers here. This is the actual content, in this case, hypertext, to be displayed by a web browser. So, in this video, I try to explain very basic networking and how it's unreliable by default. Then, we have sent our first HTTP request over a reliable TCP connection using the tool netcat and interpreted the response at a very high level. This is only the tip of the iceberg. There was many additional features and improvements to the protocol over the years. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will continue to cover related topics and how they interact with the browsers. Until then, see you next time.